W-E-A-F, New York. of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon cost you less. Oh, why not always travel on with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening from the Auditorium Theater in Chicago, where we have as our guests for this evening's broadcast delegates to the American Legion Convention, their wives and friends. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon Time with Kurt Massey, Edna Stilwell, Jeanette, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and radio's red-headed ragamuffin, Richard Red Skelton. <laughs> Gentlemen, before you buy your next pack of cigarettes, think this over. Avalons offer you not just one advantage, but two all-important points of superiority, reasons why it will pay you well to give them a trial. Yes, Avalons give you both quality, outstanding quality, mind you, and exceptional money-saving economy. They're union-made from a blend of the very finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos that money can buy. You couldn't get finer quality tobacco in any other cigarette, regardless of price, regardless of brand. And this superior Avalon quality is the reason why you'd never guess they cost you less. Three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. A repeated saving that turns into many, many extra dollars every year. Without a doubt, friends, Avalons are the outstanding cigarette value on the market today. The next time, give Avalons a trial. And now we bring you our streamlined gesture in his bit of repertorial rhetoric, Headline Hokum. Those timely topics of today, as transcribed, tortured, twisted, and told by that turbulent teletype tinkering Tyro, the Red Skelton. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And now for the news from coast to coast. Cleveland, Ohio, a man escapes from a filling station without getting his windshield wiped. <clears throat> Chicago, Illinois, 43 refugees land in Chicago from Washington Park Racetrack. <laughs> Decker, Indiana, a nearsighted farmer plowed up a railroad track. <laughs> I know how the poor guy feels. Last week, my nearsighted uncle took his tractor out and plowed under three good humor men. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of farmers, my uncle didn't do so well this year with his wheat, by the way. In fact, it was so short, they had to lather it before they could cut it. <laughs> Hollywood, California. New picture, The Rains Came, has big premiere. California Chamber of Commerce says it's just propaganda. <laughs> Mansfield, Ohio. A man escaped from an asylum, stole an automobile, and hit two Chinese laundrymen. Police report the accident caused by a loose nut and two washers. <laughs> News from the industrial world. Experts state that in 1941, everything will be streamlined. <laughs> I guess he hasn't seen my girl. <laughs> she couldn't possibly be in shape by 1941. <laughs> Don't kill them, they're hard enough to get. <clears throat> Fashion news for the women. Women this fall are going to wear silk stockings made out of coal. That's not silly. Can you imagine being dancing with some girl all of a sudden she says, pardon me, <laughs> I think I have a run in my coal bin. <laughs> 
Chicago, Illinois, the American Legion Convention arrives in Chicago. Boy, and everybody's having a lot of fun here, too. My uncle Hody left his, uh, left my Aunt Elma home this year. She kind of got out of hand last year at the convention, because all he did was run around out yelling, Where's Alma? <laughs> yeah. The... <laughs> Thanks a lot, both of you. The... <laughs> Oh, but you'd never recognize Michigan Boulevard. You remember it used to run north and south? They fixed it. It's east and west now. <laughs> so far, only one member has got hurt. He opened up the window of the 10th floor of his hotel, and he says, I think I'll fly around the block. <laughs> I'd have stopped him, but I thought he could make it. <laughs> there, was... there was a cowboy legionnaire from Texas. I'll never forget this as long as I live. He come running out of his hotel. He ran up to the curb and jumped about five feet in the air, and he landed flat on his back. <laughs> he got up, and he turned around, and he says, Gee, I could have swore I brought my horse with me. <laughs> Well, I guess that just about takes care of the news for tonight. So I'll step aside and let Jeanette sing, It Had to Be You. Sing it pretty, Jeanette, but pretty. <laughs> We don't have television, so you could see her. Brown hair, red lips, blue eyes, pink cheeks. In fact, she's a Technicolor knockout. <laughs> and the guy waving the baton, couldn't afford a flag, is uh, Bob Strong, the ex-Kansas hog caller. <laughs> no fooling. All he has to do is raise his voice, yell out, and a pig answers. <laughs> hey, Scout! Yes, but... <laughs> huh. I see you have a new suit. Well, so what? Is it a crime to buy a new suit of clothes? It is the kind you buy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this is a very special material in this suit. My tailor said it matched my personality. Oh, cheesecloth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this cloth, Bill, happens to be that new Chicago Cubs material. Genuine Gabby Dean. <laughs> right I got that suit with 57 wrappers of uh, gum wrappers. <laughs> I gummed that up, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I meant no offense, Fred. But anyway, I've got some real bad news for you. What is it, Dell? Don't tell me they found Daddy Warbuck's body. <laughs> no, but you know that idea you had of starting a school for bathtub singers? Sure, it's a swell idea. I'm really going to start a school for bathtub singers. Sort of a Saturday night school. <laughs> After all, I'm one of the original bathtub baritones. Of course, I'm a little out of practice. You mean you haven't been singing? He hasn't been bathing. Yeah. <laughs> on this program, they used to enter on cues. Now they enter on insults. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, look, Edna, I'm doing the starting... Oh, come in. Uh, pardon me, buddy. Uh, 
I am Elmer Droop. Do you think you could fix me up with a short one before the dance starts? Oh, a short one, huh? Well, right across the street to Maury's place. Uh, right across... Uh, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Uh, well, as I was saying... Who was that, anyhow? <laughs> as I was saying, I'm starting a special post bathtub singers for the American Legion. I'm gonna call it the Saturday Evening Post. <laughs> I got the whole idea from my uncle. Your uncle? Mm. He hasn't had any use for his bathtub since Prohibition. Yeah. <laughs> That's so. Well, he must spend a lot of time in the tub. Everybody I know calls him an old soak. <laughs> well, Red, how'd he give you the idea of starting the bathtub singing school? Well, one day he went into the bathroom and without thinking what he was doing, he got into the tub. <laughs> Oh, I know. That must have been the day he apologized for reeking with the smell of water. Mm. Oh, it couldn't have been, no. Well, anyway, your Saturday night bathtub singing school is doomed. What do you mean? The sponsors are moving the show to Wednesday night starting next week. Oh, oh, so that's what Mr. Avalon meant at rehearsal when he said he was going to kick me into the middle of next week. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Red, but the show moves to Wednesday night starting next Wednesday, September 27th. Same time, same station. Same joke. Yeah. Now, listen. <laughs> they can't do this to me. What? Come in. Oh, uh, pardon, pardon me, buddy, but I gotta get fixed up with a short one before the dance starts. Well, that's funny. Maury couldn't fix you up with a short one. Try the place around the corner. Uh, around the, uh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah, this time, don't drag your heels on the way out. <laughs> Boy, now, there's a guy that's really having fun. <laughs> My oldest brother's having a lot of fun, too. He's meeting all of his old pals here. Everybody calls him Sam Brown. Sam Brown? Yeah, he's taking a belt to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the other way around, but I'm not going back. <laughs> but about this Saturday night bathtub singing, hey, maybe I could get the people to change their bath night. Or maybe I could change Saturday up to Wednesday. Who do you think you are, the president? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, too bad it's not on Thursday night. That's the maid's night out, and people could save a lot of time by taking the dishes in the tub with them. <laughs> Gosh, and I've, I've even sent for a, a real sailor to be the admiral of the toy sailboats that people float in their tubs. Now I'm in a pickle. Hello, sweet Liness. Well, look who's in town. Gypsy Rose Levy. <laughs> Please, around the convention, I'm being known as Mademoiselle Ginsburg from Amontiers, Indiana. Later tonight, I'm doing a revival of a play I used to do for the dope boys over there. Oh, how they love me in that musical, Camille. Camille? Camille's not a musical. So on stage, I can't whistle a little? <laughs> Never would I forget the scene where I'm dying. <laughs> All the while, I'm dying such tears with weeping from the dope boys. And finally, when I die, such applause. <laughs> Oh, well, you probably want me for support, huh? That's right, Luxon Kugel. <laughs> Could you lend me, please, five bucks? Well, some other time, Gypsy. Right now, I'm very busy. My, my, such a stingy pants. <laughs> Money with him is no object, just an objection. <laughs> well, now to get back to my bathtub singing school. I... That must be the sailor. Come in. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Sea dog. Oh, yes, Mr. Skelton. That is just gobs of fun. <laughs> gobs of fun. <laughs> Looks like we're getting a little corn off of the cob tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, I missed that one, too, didn't I? <laughs> Say, how come you're a sailor, Herky? Well, you see, my girl likes football, and this is the only way I could think of to get tickets to the Army-Navy game. Your girl? Say, ah, uh, you probably got a girl in every port. Oh, heavens, do you think so? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm going to have an awful battle with my conscience, then. Ah, uh, don't worry, Harky. I'll tell you how, I'll tell you what to do to strengthen your will. Strengthen that... it? Well, good heavens, I want something to weaken it. <laughs> Imagine you a sailor. I bet you can't even handle yourself in water. Oh, can't I? <laughs> well, once when I was ten miles offshore and the boat started to sink... I dove overboard and reached land in one minute. Reached land in one minute? Impossible. Not for me, it's not. I can't swim, so I sunk. <laughs> well, I got to go now, Mr. Skelton. If I get my sailor suit all dirty, my mom will wallop the tar out of me. 
Oh, uh, wait a minute, Hunky. I need you as the head skipper of my toy boat. Now, your slogan will be, rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men in a tub. Oh, yep. mercy, how unsanitary. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't care. You wait. Next Wednesday, Dell, I'll have everybody. Come in. Uh, look, buddy, I couldn't get a short one in the last place either. And I gotta get a short one before the dance starts. But well, I can't help you out then, Drew. Uh, why not? Look at them girls out there. I'm looking for a date and I'm such a little runt. I gotta get a short one before the dance starts. Yeah. Oh, what's the use? Play some music, Bob. <laughs> Here's Bob Strong and his orchestra in Bob's own arrangement of Day In, Day Out. the old sea captain said about Avalon cigarettes. Well, he said, Well, blow down me topsails and shiver me timbers if these Avalons ain't the best cigarettes I ever smoked. Aye, it's been clear sailing and me pocketbooks took on a cargo of extra shekels since I signed up with Avalons. <laughs> the old captain is right, friends. And your pocketbook will take on many, many extra dollars, too, when you switch to Avalon. You see, Avalon's cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. And you'll be amazed how fast that saving of three to five cents on every pack of cigarettes you smoke turns into important money, extra dollars that you never would have otherwise. But bear this in mind, friends. Without knowing it, you'd never guess Avalon's cost you less. They're unsurpassed in quality, union-made from the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos that grow, blended to perfection. What more could you ask in a cigarette? Exceptionally high quality, outstanding money-saving economy. Avalon certainly deserve a trial. Get a pack tonight. <laughs> Kurt Massey and the Avalon Chorus in that melody which led the parade of American hits for so long, Harbor Life. One evening long ago, a big ship was leaving. One evening long ago, two lovers were grieving. A crimson sun went down, the lights began to glow. Across the harbor, one evening long ago, I saw the told me we were parting the same old harbor line that once brought you to me. I watched the harbor line. How could I help if tears were still 
The silvery sea, the silvery sea. I long to hold you near and kiss you just once more. But you were on the ship, and I was on the shore. gentlemen, we come to our slice of life, a short playlet on things that happen in everyday life, things that you do, I do, in fact, everybody does. What's the one about tonight, Red? Well, it's about a fellow who wants a raise in salary, but he hasn't the nerve to ask for it, and no crack. <laughs> well, anyway, this fellow wants a raise in salary, but he doesn't think the time's right because he's only been with the firm for five years. <laughs> You set the scene, Dell. All right, Red. The time about 8 o'clock in the morning. The place somewhere in your hometown. Now, as the scene opens, we find Edna Stilwell, who plays the part of a stenographer, greeting Red Skelton, who plays the part of an almost white-collar man. <laughs> Skelton, is five... Skelton is five minutes late for work. Listen. Well, well, look who's here. Isn't it a lovely morning? You mean the boss isn't here yet? Nope. I think he's still down in the bar having a nightcap. Oh. Did you punch the time clock this morning? No, I'm so weak, I just slapped it. <laughs> Didn't you go to bed last night? Look at your face. Well, if it's the same one I had last night, I've seen it. <laughs> Besides, I got up so late this morning, I had to shave on the bus. Well, you better get more sleep. Hmm. Well, I'd like to, but my little brother keeps me awake all night long. He's a messenger boy, you know, and all night he dreams he's riding a bicycle. Gee, the only time I get any rest at all is when he's coasting. <laughs> you look rested today, though. Thanks. Mm. I think my vacation did me good. Did you have a good time? Oh, I had more fun. You did? I went to a summer place called Camp Termites in the woods. Mm. And everyone was so friendly. Yeah. Yes, and at night when you go to bed, the mosquitoes would come around and tuck you in. Mm. <laughs> Gee, I wish I could save enough money to go up to the mountains, or even up in the hills. Gee, the nearest thing I ever get to anything that's hilly is the lumps in my mashed potatoes. <laughs> what did you do on your vacation? My vacation? You mean the time the boss gave me a long lunch hour? <laughs> yes. Well, I took a boat ride on those excursion boats, the SS Icky. <laughs> Oh, uh, it was a nice boat. It had a, cre a crew of three. Sort of a SS Icky with a one, two, three. <laughs> uh, and the captain, I had a lot of fun. The captain let me steer the boat, you know. And it's the first time a boat ever crossed Lake Michigan side saddle. <laughs> I love to take boat trips. I'll well, your boat someday. maybe with your raise and salary, you can save enough to take a cruise to Bermuda next year. Well, I want to tell you now, about that raise. Now, don't tell me you didn't ask for it. Well, I didn't want to start any trouble. Besides, I've only got 40 years to go, and then I get my pension. <laughs> and I... You remember what I told you? Remember? I said if you didn't ask for that raise, I wouldn't be your girl any longer. Oh, don't say that. Well, you know I couldn't live without you and your mother's cooking. <laughs> and besides, if I ask for a raise, I'm afraid he'll fire me. Well, suppose he does. You could get another job. How? I don't even know Jim Farley. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't want to take any chances. My mom needs the money when they're running. Why don't your stepfather go to work? I think he's going to go to work next week. In fact, he's so sure of getting a job, he's already planning a walkout. 
He wouldn't stand on his feet long enough for that. Yeah. Now, listen. Someday we're going to get married. We are? Yes, but not until you learn to ask for things. Oh. Now, when Mr. Cheatham comes in, you're going to walk in the office, look him straight in the eye, and what are you going to say? Well... Tell me, what are you going to say? You want the inkwells filled, Mr. Cheatham? <laughs> no. You're going to say, listen, Mr. Cheatham, I've worked for you for five years, and I want more money. That's what you're going to say. I am? Gee, I'm a real he-man, ain't I? <laughs> There, it's him now. Good morning, Mr. Cheatham. Uh, uh, nice morning, Mr. Cheatham. Skelton, how come every time I walk into this office, you're not working? How come? Well, I guess I just haven't been listening lately. Good morning, Mr. Cheatham. Oh, yes. Good morning, Miss Stilwell. Oh, by the way, call up my broker and tell him to buy me 10,000 shares of Peruvian steel at $2. Yes, sir. It's a steal at that price. <laughs> it's oh, a steal. Mr. Cheatham. Get it? Steel. You're so clever at making up witty things. Isn't he, Richard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, stop laughing on my time. Yeah. And, Miss Stilwell, if anyone wants me, I'm in conference. And, oh, uh, has Dick Tracy, I mean, has the morning paper come yet? No, sir, but I'll send it as I did as soon as it does. All right. He's awful gruff, in me. Oh, now calm yourself. Mr. Cheatham's a very nice boss. Yeah. And now'd be a good time to ask for that raise. Yeah. Oh, if you'd only get enough nerve to assert yourself. Well, if you really feel that way about it, I'll ask you some of these days. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to bother with you anymore. Don't speak to me until you go into Mr. Cheatham's office and ask for a raise. Oh, gee, Edna, you're going to get me fired. Can I ask him tomorrow? Oh, don't get mad at me. Well, if you don't pay any attention to me and I go in there and get fired, then I won't be able to pay any attention to you. Or vice versa. <laughs> Gee, I feel a little sick. All right, I'll do it. But I got an awful feeling this is the end. Why, he's really going to do it. Well, what are you putting your hat and coat on for? I asked for the raise like you said, and I got fired like I said. off another Saturday night spot. Yes, sir, Red. In fact, that cleans up the last Saturday night spot for us. It's Wednesday night from now on, you know, at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time and 7.30 Central Standard Time. Yes, and we'll try to give everybody a good time. And before signing off, I'd like to say to the boys of the American Legion, we hope that you have a lot of fun and the finest convention that you've ever had, and we know you will. Good night, everybody, and we'll see you all next Wednesday night. Don't forget... Remember, friends, during the week when you ask for Avalon cigarettes... Don't forget your change. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Yes.
Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents, plus city or state tax. Be with us next Wednesday evening at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. Starting a new series of programs with us, we'll have Dick Todd, well-known Victor recording artist. Del King speaking. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.